Hello everyone and welcome to WASP 101. I'm Andrea Rossi, the developer of WASP. In this tutorial we're gonna finally enter a feature that has been requested by many of you which is go looking into how we can create aggregations using field-driven uh, aggregation procedures. So what field-driven aggregation procedures allow us, they allow us to specify a custom goal which will drive the aggregation to follow and to try to approximate the shape using the parts that we define. Um, the field aggregation is based on a, a concept that is widely used in computer graphics, which is the concept of voxel. So if you're not familiar with the concept, what a voxel is, is a point in, within a three-dimensional grid which gets assigned a position in space given by its three coordinates, as well as uh, can store uh, any number of values which are stored in a specific channel. If this is, sounds a little bit abstract, you might think of something as an example. It are the, the most simple example that you can think of are two-dimensional pixels uh, in an image. So they have a position in space within the image and they store uh, a specific value. So what we are doing with WASP when we are working with fields is we are using those fields as uh, drivers to decide where to place parts in the aggregation. As you can see from this diagram here, we always start from placing a part in the highest point, like in the point in the field with the highest value. And then from there, we proceed by testing different possibilities of growth and ch always choosing the, uh, the growth position, which uh, brings us to the next highest value in the field. By repeating this process over and over again, we are able to generate very complex aggregations that approximate um, any field which we might define. What we are going to be doing in these tutorials is, there's going to be, I guess, two, three tutorials about this, is we are going to be looking at how we can use different kind of um, geometries and methods to generate those fields and how then we can have different types of parts follow those fields and approximate the geometry we started from. If you go on and download the uh, Rhino file that you will find in the description of this video, you will find uh, two elements within this file. The first element that we find is um, a part, which is a truncated octahedron, which has eight connections defined over it, as well as its base geometry. And then you will find the curve. And what we want to do in this file is we want to create a field that is based on the distance from this curve. And then we want to have this part growing following the, along the curve uh, while at the same time keeping the uh, rules consistent within the aggregation. In order to build uh, such a definition, we're going to start by creating our part in the way we always do it. We always did it. We are going to start by creating a geometry component. I'm going to create my bifocals first. We're going to create a geometry component, right click and say set one geometry and bring our octahedron in. We can then select the octahedron and hide it in Rhino. And then we are going to bring in our points and we're going to do that by creating a point component, right clicking, set multiple points, and I'm going to select them in order first from the top and then move from the first connection at the bottom and do the same in that order. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And right click to accept. And then we're going to create our curve component and do the same. Right click, set multiple curves. And it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Great. We brought in our uh, the elements that compose our geometry. We can then go to our WASP tab and start by creating our connections. So we go to elements, connection from direction. We connect geometry, centers, and up vectors. And we see that our uh, connection planes are created here. And then we're going to create our part. So we're going to go to parts, get a wasp basic part, give it a name. And in this case, I'm going to go for a short name and it's going to just call it P, capital. 
assign the geometry and assign the connections. And till here is nothing new. We have been doing this, we have been doing this several times and all we did is creating a part. Now the, when we, the difference will come that when we want to start creating an aggregation with, with, part, with this part is we are not going to use any more uh, stochastic aggregation as we used in most of the cases, but we're going to be using a field driven aggregation. So let's go on and create it. The field driven aggregation looks pretty much the same as the stochastic aggregation with the addition of one input that is the field input. Uh, let's start adding the stuff we know. First, we assign our parts, and in this case, we have just one part. Then we have to assign the number of elements, and let's go for 120. Uh, depending on how many rules you will create, field aggregations will be definitely slower than stochastic aggregation. So please be careful with the number of starting parts you might define. And then for the rules, we are going to want to define uh, some specific rules, and trust me with uh, how to define them. In order to do that, I'm going to first create a point list component and connect it to my points with a slider maybe so that I can see the numbering of my elements and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create connections between opposing faces so it's gonna be 0 to 6, 1 to 7, 2 to 4 and 3 to 5 and I'm gonna create them in a panel so I'm gonna create a panel Zoom in, right click, and uncheck multi-line data. In this way, every line will be a separate entry. And then I'm going to go on and start creating my rules. So my rules are going to be P0 to P6. And I'm going to write all the rules upside down. P6 to P0. And then I'm just going to copy paste those rules and just add, just change the numbers. So 1 is going to be 7, and 7, 1. 2 is going to go to 4, and 4 to 2. And lastly, we're going to have 3, and 3 is going to go to 5. Oh, sorry, 3. 5, and 5, 3. Here we go. These are our rules. And we're going to go and get a rule from text component, connect this, and connect this to rules. And lastly, we are going to create our button. So till now, nothing new from what we have been doing before. Now we have to do the uh, extra step, which we never done. And the extra step is to create a field that will store the distance from this curve. I'm just going to move a little bit lower. And I'm going to start by import importing my curve. So I'm going to right click, set one curve, and select it. And the way in which we create a field is that uh, we're going to be doing it in two steps. And the first step is we're going to be creating um, a boundary for this field and then fill this boundary with a grid of points. And after we've done that, we are going to be uh, calculating a set of values to be assigned for to, the, to each of the points. In this case, the values will be the distance from the curve. And we're going to be assigning this to the field. Let's go on and start by defining our volume. We are going to create a bounding box component, which will be wrapping around our curve. And as we will have a certain level of, um, so we're going to have some thickness of the part reconstructing this. So we don't want to have a bounding box that fits exactly to the curve, but we want to have it a bit larger. To do that, we are going to create a scale NU component, which will allow us to scale in a non-uniform way uh, along the axis. We are going to connect our box. And then for the plane, as we want to be scaling around this box in all directions, we are going to create a volume component, which will allow us to calculate the centroid of the box and connect it to the plane. And now we're going to specify three sliders to scale the um, box non-uniformly in all the directions. We are going to do 
for both X and Y. Maybe. And we're gonna do 1.5 for the Z. So you see we have a bit of an offset, maybe a bit more on the Z, around the original box in order that we can allow the parts to grow a bit around that. Now that we have the base geometry of our uh, field, we can go on and create the points. And to create the point grid, we can use um, a component that is called field points. This component takes just two inputs. The first input is gonna be the geometry of the boundary. And then by default, it's gonna use a resolution that will create 10 points on the X axis. And uh, you see that this resolution is relatively coarse. So we might wanna uh, scale it a bit down. So we are gonna, for example, say, now right now the resolution, you can read it in the bold is 11. I'm gonna go for a resolution of 2.5. So that's maybe a bit too fine. Let's go to four. Now, in order to choose a resolution for the field, you have to just compare the, di the dimension of the grid created by the field with the dimension of your part. As the part will be uh, your, let's say, resolution on the final aggregation, you want to have uh, a resolution that is comparable, ideally a little bit smaller. So you want to have a little bit more resolution in the field that the parts allow you. And this will allow to create more uh, graded transitions between the different parts. Um, now, don't go too high because, of course, um, the, hi the higher the resolution, the slower is going to be the calculation of, um, of the generation of the field itself because we are going to have to measure up distance from all of these points. So here we go, we have our points. And now what we want to do is we want to calculate the distance of each of these points from our curve that we imported. And now we cannot see, maybe I will hide the boxes for now. And there we go, we have our curve. To do that, we're going to use a component that is called pull point. And we're going to provide our points in P. And we're going to use our input curve as the geometry to pull the points on. It's going to take a moment, not that much. And so here we get the point, each, for each of the points we get the projected point on the geometry, but the interesting part that we get is we get a distance. What we want to do with this distance is we want to remap it in order to generate our field values. So we're going to bring a remap component so the values we want to remap are going to be our values. In order to define the star domain, we're going to use a bounds component. And then for the target domain where we want to remap in, we're going to want to flip the uh, values. So right now in our field, if we would use the values as they are, they're remapped by default between 0 and 1. We are going to have very low values when we are close to the curve because the distance is very small and very high values when we are far from the curve because the distance is high. Now that's not what we want, but what we want is the exact opposite because we want to have very high values close to the curve, which means we are going to have a very high probability of placing a part and much lower values when we go far away. So to do that, we are just going to use a panel. And in the panel, we're going to type 1, 2, 0. And plug that there. Now, if we want to visualize uh, what we created so far, we can go on and take a custom preview component where we can connect our points to G. And then we can take a gradient component where we're going to connect the output of our remap to T, and then we're going to connect it to M. Let's maybe go on and choose a, a um, more dramatic changing gradient. And we see what we created. So we created a field in which the points which are close to the curve have a much higher values, which are assigned in red. And the points that are far away from the curve has a much lower values. However, you also see that this field is very uniform. So it's grow, it 
slowly transitions from red to green. And that's not necessarily what we want to do, because if we want to approximate the curve very precisely, we might instead want to be very accurate and have a field that really sharply transitions from red to green in order to have um, the parts following the curve uh, as closely as possible. To do that, we can use a component that is called uh, the graph mapper. So when we use a graph mapper, we can apply uh, graphic functions to our components and sharpen a uh, transition from one value to the other one. If I plug this now, we see that nothing changed. But if I start pulling the handles and making this curve, like the straight line look more like a curve, you see that now I have just very few points which are close to the curve, which are red, and then they very quickly sharply transition from the red to the green. So we are going to have a field that will bring the parts to be placed very closely to the uh, curve. And then once we field all the places that are very close, it's going to start growing out outwards. Great. This point, these values that come out of the graph mapper are our values for uh, our field. So we can go on and create a field by going to aggregation and getting wasp field. We will provide our base, like the empty fields from field points as the base, which will define all the elements to create the field. We should assign a, a name to the field. And for now, it's going to be just, I'm just going to call it my field. And then we are going to assign our values. So you see that now if we look here, we actually created a field that is called my field. It has a resolution of four units and it stores 18,000 points. Great. What we can do then is we can maybe bring this a little bit further. And we, go on and we can go on and get our field and plug it into the field input. And now you see that very quickly we calculated our first parts. Let's maybe go on and hide all the points of the field so that we don't have them now. And let's go on and go to um, parts, get part geometry. And we see what we created. We see that we created 120 parts that really closely follow the curve can maybe con add a bit more parts, let's say 200. And we see that with 200 parts, now we are actually completing the whole curve. If now we continue adding parts, we are gonna thicken this uh, sequence wrapping around the curve. If now something interesting for you to see is that if I hit reset, I'm gonna have either very minimal changes, which are just the results of some, some rounding error, or no change at all. And the reason for that is that the, the procedure that generates the um, field aggregation is not anymore a um, stochastic procedure, but it's an accurate procedure that creates the best possible aggregation for the given field. And one interesting thing that we can do is we can actually visualize the way in which, uh, like the order in which these parts have been growing by coloring them according to the moment in which they've been added to the aggregation. I'm going to maybe create a bit more. So to do that, what we are going to be doing is we are going to be getting a list length component to calculate how many parts we have. And then we're going to be connecting this to a range component in order to create a set of values between zero and one, one of each, each of each, each of one associated to one part. And one thing is that the number that we specify here is the number of steps not the number of values. So the number of values is going to always be one more in order to uh, ensure that we have the same number of values. We are going to create a subtraction component and subtract one from the number of parts. So we see that now we know that we have 250 parts and now here we have 250 values. If now we pass these values to a gradient component, And then we use a custom preview to visualize our parts. Again, let's maybe choose uh, another coloring. Y 
you see what we have. So, sorry. So what we have is our parts are colored from the part that was placed first, which are the darker one, to the parts that were placed last, which are the lighter one here. And you, we can actually test how this happened if we start scrolling this down we see how the aggregation grew from the point of the beginning and then started following the curve great so that was it for uh, this tutorial I hope that uh, you get a first introduction to how fields work if things are not entirely clear, do not worry. We are going to have more videos looking at different ways to create fields. And I hope that things will become more clear as we do more examples. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments. And subscribe to the channel if you want to keep informed with the uh, new videos coming out. We are going to also have uh, general grasshopper tutorials coming out pretty soon. So subscribe and stay updated. And see you to the next tutorial. Bye.